Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Park and Recreation Advisory Committee meeting. Today is July the 19th, 2021. We do have a quorum, and I call this meeting to order. I need a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I second. Everybody in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. We'll go straight into the meeting, talk about Independence Day, which was huge and large, and I'll turn it over to Kathy or David, whoever wants to talk about it. Um, I didn't realize until the Monday after that that was our 10th one that we've hosted. Um, and I've I hired in right after the first one, so that's my ninth one. It was by far the best one we've had. As far as crowd turnout, um, once it got started, it was um, – we, we weren't expecting that large of a turnout. Um, it's the first time we've ever had the issue of not having um, bathroom facilities that could accommodate the crowd. So, you know, there's a couple of things we can learn from. Um, last year, we had the front bathrooms open in the baseball complex, but what we, what we ran into, kids going in there shooting off fireworks, so we shut those. We did end up opening those up this year just due to the sheer volume of people. But we appreciate you guys coming out. Like I said, it was the by far the best one we've had, the biggest turnout. The music was great. Um, the door prizes, the giveaways were great. Um, once the crowd started on there, we, we couldn't even maneuver our side-by-sides on the football field. It was so big. I came just a, just a tad bit later than I wanted to, and I think I got one of the last parking spots on concrete. And then, as I was um, leaving, I don't know. I don't know that we had enough parking. I know people were parked over at the school and out on the grass, and so I just kind of sat in my car for a while because <laughs> I knew it was going to take a minute to get out of there. Even with two um, exits, it was still that was very large. It's very impressive. Well, and you know that's the first time in probably three years that we haven't even battled rain. So that helped us out too. I think it being on a Sunday and most people were off on Monday, the, the crowd was just unbelievable. And I think everybody, you guys pushing it out on your personal Facebook pages definitely helps. The more eyes you can get on it, um, the better, better publicity we're gonna get from it. I think Sheila, and this was Sheila's first one working, and I think it was Kathy's first or second one. It was the first one Kathy worked in the role as events coordinator. So. I. I think they were just a little, I think we were all overwhelmed by yeah. just the sheer volume of people we had. I think I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I heard that um, like the vendors ran out of food and stuff too. Um, I know that Biggins ran out, but then they restocked. So they were able to keep the supply going to the end of the event. But all the vendors reached out to me afterward and talked about um, they had a really good night as far as the vendor side went as well. <clears throat> So, and I think our vendors that we had, we've had in the past, so they geared their product on past experiences with us. And they were, they were caught off guard and overwhelmed also. So, you know, it's a kind of a catch-22. Yeah, we love the crowd. Next year we want to build on it, but then we want, to, we want to be consistent with our vendors that we have, and we don't want to bring eight vendors in there and then the crowd die down, you know, and the vendors we have that are – that our regulars aren't getting the business. So it's kind of that fine line where, yeah, we do want to continue to grow it, but we don't want to have six vendors there and nobody's getting the business or the crowd the crowd's down. I'll, uh, some of the things that I made notes about, the traffic, good. LPD did a great job. The music was awesome. People was up dancing. Uh, for those of you who didn't attend, uh, Mayor Cole, myself, and uh, Alderman Coates was drawing tickets and doing giveaways from these wooden crosses and flags that Kathy had purchased. And I just randomly picked a little girl out of the crowd, just for no re rhyme or reason. And the very last wooden flag we gave away, nobody was answering. And I heard her mom yell, I forgot her name now, 
uh, check your ticket. She checked her ticket and it was her. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the weather was awesome. The food was great. Uh, I had one of Biggin's big smoked bologna sandwiches. So it was, it was a good time. I, I can't say enough good about it. I don't, I don't know that I would change anything other than I'd get the kids off of the bumping, jumping things before the lights go out. <laughs> The kids. I heard. Had a I heard Andrew had something to do with that, so we won't talk about it. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to movie in the park. David. That's uh, Miss Kathy. Ms. All right, Kathy. movie in the park is Friday, August thirteenth this year, or this month, or next month. We're doing Doolittle. Will be the movie, and it's the last movie of the summer series, and so. We won't have a movie in September because of old timers, but then for the zombie walk in October, we'll have a movie for that one as well. How long is this one? I believe it was like an hour or 102 minutes, maybe, hour and a half, somewhere around in there. Yeah, so it's probably going to start about 8.30. I think that's, we started the last one probably 8.15, 8.20. So it'll probably start in that area somewhere. And then Senior Center and Kona Ice will be there doing refreshments again. <clears throat> All right. Anybody got anything to say about that? No, I really enjoyed them. This is the first year I've actually gotten to come out and bring my granddaughter, and I have loved all the movies. And we've had a pretty good crowd every month consistently, so um, hoping it'll continue to be that way. Farmer's Market. All right, Farmer's Market. Um, the last four weeks, we averaged 20 vendors per week. Um, we have about a little over 70 that registered for the season as a whole. And then each week, there's a different participation depending on availability. So it has dropped slightly. But with the weather, the last two weekends, we had a chance of rain. And so that kind of scared the vendors away on top of the foot traffic. So. We probably still need to be pushing it out on our own pages. Um, just to remind, because every now and then I will still see somebody say, does anybody know where I can get fresh produce or right. whatever? So just to keep reminding people that we do have it. Right. And we do advertise a vendor list. I'll send out an email every Wednesday asking who's going to participate. And then Thursday afternoon, we always advertise the list so that people know who will be there each weekend. So, and then Sheila is really good at getting on Facebook and sharing it out there to the different groups. Something I learned Saturday that I didn't know was uh, I talked to the farmer down there and asked him if, uh, if he set up anywhere else. And he said, yeah, we do. I said, where at? He said, Nolensville. I said, when is Nolensville? He said, the same time as your office are on Saturday, except Dad goes down there. So I didn't realize theirs was the same as, mm -hmm. same as ours. I think they set up at four different places. Because yeah. I think they do Mount Juliet and Murfreesboro as well. So I guess 8 to 12 is kind of the given time. It is. That's pretty across the board as far as the surrounding areas. All right, Howl at the Moon's coming up. I've seen the big billboard sign out there for it. Mm -hmm. As of now, we have 37 runners signed up. Uh, Sheila has gone in and been accepted to uh, over 40 running groups in the area. <laughs> so she keeps pushing it onto the different pages, <laughs> trying to recruit. Um, I called the school board. They gave me the requirements to get a flyer put in the school packets. So we'll be getting that out to the school board so that the kids will have access to that after school starts. When does school start? I believe August 6th was the first half a day. August 9th is the first full, full, first day. full day. Right. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's about to start, isn't it? Yeah, that'd be really good if you could get that in those mm -hmm. packets. Trying to get the middle and high school track teams involved. So, And then July 31st is when the early bird $20 ends. And then from August 1st to the 26th, it jumps up to 25. And then day of race is $30. So. And now we'll talk about the Old Timers Festival. 
Um, kickoff concert, uh, Friday night, September 17th. Um, Resurrection and Journey Tribute. They were they ended the festival last year. They're going to help us out Friday night. Um, parade starts at 10, starts here at City Hall, ends at the park. Um, we're going to have, we haven't booked the day entertainment yet. We've got to slots for two bands. Um, I don't know if you've, we, we had talked about one, maybe bringing one back for you know, an hour slot. But then the Eagle Maniacs are going to finish the night up. And that one's at 7, right? Correct. 7, yes. And then I'll let Kathy give you the rundown of what she has planned as far as vendors and uh, demonstrators. Um, currently, right now, we have uh, 23 vendors signed up. Um, we're pushing out tomorrow on Facebook parade registration, some more vendor opportunities. Um, we have uh, the blacksmith, the log splitting display, and the... Um, we have somebody that does glass art that he's going to like he's going to do a workshop so he'll have citizen participation with it and then they get to leave with the little piece of glass art that they did and randy is reaching out to a butter turner to see if we can get them to come as well and maybe a wood turner and then as far as we've got the axe throwing um we don't want to forget that one yeah we don't want to forget the axe throwing um just trying to reach out to a few other activities to bring in. We'll probably bring back the guy that had the uh, bungee, the inflatable bungee jumper that was at 4th of July. That was a big hit. And then still trying to recruit other activities. So, so we'll spend about five seconds talking about this. I just want to say it. Whatever, did we do completely away with the train guy? Oh, um, we did completely do away with the one that was on the agenda last month we did find another one outside or out oh. of murfreesboro okay that we have sent the contract over to be reviewed so we are hoping to get one it'll just be a different one yeah. i'm glad i was kind of disappointed but it sounded like that other guy never mind well i don't think it, it was him i think it was his insurance company yeah. that wouldn't let him waive that clause um you know because he's been here with us before but it, it was several years ago. It was probably six to eight years ago. Um, but I think some things were maybe done a little. Everything we didn't come before the board. All contracts come before you guys now. So it just makes everything out all uniform so everybody knows what's going on. The Blue Cross Blue Shield grant, if you guys hadn't forgot about it, came before we talked about it at the BOMA meeting. I think that's going to be a a huge grant. Uh, I'm gonna let Andrew talk about that. Well, the uh, of course our grant writer is gonna work on that. It opens in August, and of course y'all got a packet last month. It's basically one of six designs. I don't know if anybody has any input on that. Did y'all look through and see which which design you well, all prefer? Were we supposed <clears throat> Excuse me. Were we supposed to to, to We just pick wanted up? your feedback. Uh, okay. So maybe next month you can come back and kind of see which one. And I think everybody got emails about that. Yeah, I so think you, when your packet we only included three designs. Maybe there's six total. They're on their website. We took three out just because one was one didn't have a shelter. We were kind of geared towards community pavilions, and two of them were. One had a lot of green space in the center opposed to the port in place. And I think the third was, one was geared more towards like athletics and timing and sprints and required some electricity there for like time clocks. And we could just see issues with that in the future. So those were the three we kind of picked out, Andrew and I, but by all means, go through there and look. Yeah, so let's, everybody look at their thing there from, and uh, you know, Put your input in on it. See which one. You did. Okay. No. You did. I actually looked at it, but I don't forgot what was the names of the ones I wanted. I'd be <laughs> lying. I know what it looks like, but but I, I I don't remember the name of it. And the world famous ice rink. 
Yes, sir. The board approved that. The board of Aaron Alderman approved us purchasing that. Um, we're in that process of trying to get them um, the initial deposit so we can get that ordered and have it shipped to us. It takes two months for a budget amendment to be done, but the, well, they'll secure it with the initial deposit and then the rest is payable on delivery. I'm pretty excited to see that thing. I hope it's a, I hope it's a big hit, which I think it will be. I'm not going to be the first to try it. But I'll watch you do it. <laughs> uh, I skate. Those training aids, you know, you can use. <laughs> be out there with my little thing. I skate and one leg will go hunting and one will go fishing. Uh, dog park. How we doing on it, David? That's Andrew. Or Andrew, I'm sorry, you're right. Well, we are the same as last month. We're still waiting on the soil disturbance permit from TDEC. So hopefully we're going to get with Adam this week. Hopefully within the next week or two we'll get that. But the driveway has been put in, construction entrance, and the sidewalk ramp curvings to the driveway has been put in. Other than that, we're still waiting on the state. I seen where you all were down there scratching for that thing, and, and it looked like you were sitting right on top of solid rock. Solid rock. Solid rock. And then I came back and seen where you'd put rock on top of it. I said, oh, okay, well, I don't guess that's going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, we're still at a standstill just because of Has everybody up here seen the, where the dog park's going? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are chomping at the bit for that. Yeah, it's, it's on my street. We all, you know, pass by each other when we walk our dogs. And they're like, hey, you hear about the dog park? Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited about it, too. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's talking. So Sheila always sends me a email and wants me to go over the agenda and, uh, I, you know, it kind of puts me on the spot and I can't never think about things to add. But one thing I want to, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Giles because I put him and Mr. Autry in charge of something and I just wanted to get an update to see how it's going. Could you tell us what we're talking about, Mr. Giles? Yes, uh, our last meeting, Rick and I were tasked with uh, coming to, with a female flag football league. Um, Rick and I, we, we initially talked, but we haven't talked since, but there's it's no problem. But from my POV and what I've done is I have perspective of at least 50 women who want to play. Um, that's with employees and some companies. So when, I, when Rick comes back from vacation, we'll get together and We'll put our pool together. So from my understanding, Rick has uh, experience coaching in a, in a league, a professional league or semi-pro league. So this would be very exciting and, and promising for the city of Laverne. So I guess, David, uh, you know, I worked on this year before last, year before last, and of course, I started too late and then COVID. Uh, I'm sure this is something that uh, y'all would have to plan out. Uh, I was thinking about having it behind the senior center, get the guys out there from parks, drawing some white lines, making about a 50 yard field. Uh, I'm sure it would have to be approved by us or by Bruce or, or Evan. So or, are you talking about a game or a league? A game. Yeah. Um. What I, what I would hope is, and this is what made me bring it back to life, is obviously adult softball's over with here. We can't, we can't do that because we, we are out of room and that's going to be taken. Uh, we can't do – the city, the park and recs can't do everything for everybody. It's just not possible. It would be nice if we was – filthy rich and had all the land, but if we could start somewhere and something like this were to go over, it'd be nice to have an annual, you know, start small, build it up, and Rick and Giles is willing to put in the work. You know, I'd like to get it started back up. Uh, this is July, so if we tentatively shot for March, 
Is that realistic? Oh, it would be realistic for us because all we would have to do would prep the field. That would be, uh, you know, how much community involvement you could get. Um, well, we just we got a lot going on through August, September, October, Christmas. Plus, it gets cold. I don't want them to be out there when it's bitter cold, but I don't want them to be out there when it's blistering hot either. So, and I think the last time we talked about this, it was, it, we had tentatively talked about March, mm -hmm. but didn't we? Yeah, we talked about March. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. But that gives you all, uh, what, nine months to at least put it in the talks, put it in the back of your head. Andrew can go by and look at that field and see, you know. Uh, at one time, the guys from Park and Rec even told me that they could take those bleachers down there from yes, the sir. park yep, we, can do that. So we could have bleachers and I mean if we could do it and work it right we could uh, get a couple of food or drink vendors or you know just I ain't talking about making it as big as old timers but just you know I'd like to see it I think it'd be fun I think there's a lot of ladies that would come out and you know mm -hmm. oh yeah I would yeah <laughs> kind of like grown men playing softball. They don't care if they, they want to win, not because they want the trophy, but because they want the bragging rights. That's right. And then the last thing that I have, David, and I don't know if this is through us or not, and I'm just, I'm just going to ask about it. Don't want to get into a big discussion about it. What about the log cabin? Um, I actually, I sent Bruce pictures this afternoon um, to go on Gov Deals. Um, so it is... You know, the board approved it. Um, well, actually, they didn't approve it. The decision was made at the last board of mayor and alderman meeting to put it on gov deals. So that has to come before you guys this month to actually approve us accessing that property out. And you know, Kathy's husband, Brian, had some great ideas. I don't know if they ever got over to you or not, but Brian, gave, Brian had some great ideas about who to call and what to do. Um, listen huh i didn't really listen to y'all's conversation that well no he did he so what she's saying she doesn't listen to her husband <laughs> well i'm just saying that uh, brian had some great ideas he he talked about some stuff i i didn't know about so you might want to see if you can get kathy to talk you know take a minute out of her day to talk to her husband and listen to him <laughs> see if she can get some info well i think if it goes on gov deals it some it'll be gone I don't know how, you know, if somebody coming on city property, if they've got to be self-insured to, to move it, or, you know, that's a whole nother animal there. Uh, but yes, yeah, I know there's several, I know several places that it could end up. You know, like I said, yeah, y'all tell us get rid of it, we can get rid of it. But. It'd make good. Uh, don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> don't All right. <laughs> Anybody got any questions, comments, concerns? Looks like we're going to have a busy fall. Thank you for everything that you do. We appreciate you. I do have one question. Every year I see people complaining about the traffic pattern for Howl of the Moon, right? Because half of Murfreesboro Road gets shut down. There's signs up weeks in advance. There's tons of notice. Have there been any recommendations that anybody's heard on ways to better communicate to people, this is going to happen, plan ahead, instead of just cussing and honking and throwing stuff at people as they run by? The traffic pattern hasn't changed and we're always dealing with that, but I think what we have in our favor now is you guys are so diligent about pushing our events out there. So people that haven't seen it in the past are now getting their eyes on it. Yeah, it's always, I mean, it's always been a good event for us, except for, you know, when the, the corona hit. Um, so we're looking to build that back up. But yeah, the best thing that, that could happen for us is what you guys are doing, because we can't push it out all, all out ourselves. You know, you guys have so many more contacts. <clears throat> and like if Kristen shares it, she may have 800 friends that are seeing it and somebody's interested in it, then they're going to share it. So it's getting out there. That's what... I think that's what's helping us grow. I think the goal for that thing is what, 300? Is At one time, there was 300 runners in it. We'd, this year, we would, if we could get 
120 to 150, I think that would be uh, that'd be a growth for us. I think we're at 90 last year. I know that uh, Kathy and Sheila always put stuff out, I, I, and I just ask all of you to just please keep sharing stuff. And, and I know that, and I get them, you know, I get text messages. You're, you're sharing the same stuff over and over. Well, especially Facebook's got this thing, you, you write something now and it'll be gone way down the list before you know, somebody if else. If you share it enough times, the day that it's happening and people want to know what's happening, then there's enough people mm -hmm. to answer. Right. Yeah. Is it on that thing, Sheila, about uh, the money? Like Kathy just talked about. The to, breakdown of the early registration and so yeah. forth. It is on the event. And then it's on my calendar Monday to make a post to remind everybody next week is the last week to register uh, for the early registration and get the discount. So it's, it's on that thing that y'all put on Facebook? Yes. Okay. It is broke down on the actual event description. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, I know need several to. years ago, they, there were so many runners, they had to start them in two stages. So we'd like to get back to that. All right. Anything else? Mm -hmm. You've been off quiet. I know. She's thinking about her floor and her buddy. Uh, I don't really have anything other than you, we say it every month, and I tell her all the time, Kathy's doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Sheila keeps us informed. Uh, David stays on vacation, so that's the way it ought to be. <laughs> you know, he's, he's out like of the, the way. way you think. He's out of the way. So he, He's delegating quite well now. I know he's he got is. a great office. I try to go somewhere that doesn't have cell service. <laughs> All right, our next board meeting will be August the 16th at 6 p.m. And if nobody else has anything, I call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>